Hello, welcome. This is the regular board meeting of Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education, Monday, November 12th at 7 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Joshi. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Hughes. Here. Member Miller. Here. Member Samanti. Here. Member Siegel. Here. Member Purcell. Here. Uh, in honor of Veterans Day today, we would like to express our gratitude to Member Miller and all veterans in the District 58 community who have served their country in the armed forces. We'll now uh, observe a short moment of silence in their honor. Okay, and with the veterans in mind tonight, we'll proceed with our flag salute. should have uh, noted that it's Herrick Middle School tonight, Mr. Newsack. Good evening, thank you. Uh, I am happy to introduce uh, three of our four student council uh, officers. Uh, tonight we have our president, Abby Rosenberg, our secretary, Rebecca Helston, and our treasurer, Kate Pelzinski. Unfortunately, our vice president, Nicole Katsioris, was not available to be here. And joining our student council's students are uh, is one of our two co-sponsors, Mrs. Marianne Rushke. So without further ado, I will turn it over to them and let them share some of the wonderful things they're working on at HERE. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight. It's our pleasure to be here. Uh, my voice is that we're actually starting tomorrow and the ladies are here to give you a little taste of what this fundraiser is it is our fall fan um thank you grams that's where students are given the opportunity to either purchase um, a fall gram where they can write a thank you to someone and send them a smarties candy or if they choose not to send candy and just want to write a note we have cards there that they can send teachers, staff, their friends, anyone they'd like, a note just to tell them thanks. We have, this is one of our biggest fundraisers we do in the beginning of the year. And in the past, we've sold over 1,400 candy grams. So a lot of people are getting thanked this week. Abby's going to help me with this presentation because Nicole's not here. So. So each month we try to do a spear week. In October, we did Red Whip Ribbon Week. In November, we will be doing a week of thanks. In December, we were doing holiday fun. In January, we do our Spartan Olympics. In February, we do Random Acts of Kindness or Kindness Bingo. And in March, we will be doing March Madness. One of our big fundraisers that we do is we do box tops. This is our third year of doing it. We're off to a great start. We do a competition between all of the home bases where the home base, the winning home base usually gets a special treat. It might be um, cinnamon rolls or it might be popcorn and pop. But what we did with the money is that we've um, donated over $515 to our Herrick Green team, which put in beautiful plants in the front of our school. And then this past spring, we decided to get benches outside the um, school in honor of our um, retirees. And there's a picture of our past president and vice president with our two most recent retirees. During all the sports games, we do uh, a snack shack where students can buy pop, water, Gatorade, candy, chips, cookies, and crackers at all of Herrick's home games. A new fundraiser that we're proud to announce is that we're going to do a basketball game fundraising for pancreatic cancer because we found out that there was the least researched and the least supported um, 
cancer organization, so our eighth grade boys are going to take on the staff. It's going to be Thursday, December 20th from 4 to 5. Tickets will be $3. A special ticket, if you buy it for $5, will get you pizza and pop after school, too. So I hope to see you there. We will also be doing our Super Bowl collection. We'll be collecting canned goods leading up to the Super Bowl that you can donate to Herrick. Uh, we will be donating to the Downers Grove Food Pantry. One of our um, fundraisers that we've been doing for the last three years and will continue to do this year has been um, providing funds for the Ride Jenny Ride fundraiser. What that is, is it's in the honor of a former Herrick Middle School student who she was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkiss lymphoma. And she, through the, um, her episode of having this, her friends came together and they pulled this fundraiser together. It's a motorcycle ride through several villages and they raise a lot of money. And what's nice about it is that the money goes back to families <coughs> here in our area. And we were happy to raise over um, $1,600 in just one week of selling the Ride Janie Ride bracelets to our students. We will also be doing an end of the year dance. We did one last year, more than 160 students showed up. We had cool lighting, awesome glow sticks and DJ skills, a photo booth and pizza and pop. So we were looking forward to hosting another one this year. We're just looking forward to a really fantastic year, and we have some wonderful young ladies that will be leading us um, with their leadership skills. So thank you again for having us tonight. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do for your school and the community, and we have uh, some gifts for the student council members. Thank you, girls. And now I would like to introduce uh, one of our co-presidents of our PTA, Mrs. Kim Peters. Hi, thank you for having us here this evening. This is uh, our co-president, Ann Cummins, here too. She's here just to observe. Um, <laughs> Um, so, you know, Herrick PTA is similar to all the other PTAs here. You know, we support student programs and, um, you know, teacher programs and try to provide wherever we can. Um, we did that mainly through our biggest fundraiser, which we just completed, um, called Raise Craze. And that is where um, kids collect donations through their family and friends um, for completing random acts of kindness. So they pick certain things that they're gonna do throughout the two week program. Um, they ask for the contributions and then they perform the acts of kindness. So something a little different than, you know, magazine sales or wrapping paper. Um, and this year in the two week period, we raised $36,000. So easily covers our operating budget and helps, um, you know, support some of the programs for the teachers and the students. Um, Coming up, we also uh, do a cramp Grandparents' Day where the grandparents come into the school and get a tour and choir performs, does all that kind of stuff for them. That's coming <coughs> up in December. We do the annual Across Town Classic basketball game between um, Herrick and O'Neill. That's in the spring. Um, the PTA also organizes the eighth grade dance and etiquette class. Uh, it's six weeks of <coughs> etiquette and dance class every week, and then it ends with a, you know, big dance in the uh, cafeteria at the end. So kids love and hate it all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for them. Um, and other than that, there it's, it's a pretty uh, quick two years at Herrick, so we do what we can um, when we're there, and um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a short reminder, um, the members of the audience will have an opportunity to speak during the reception of visitors later on in the agenda. 
Uh, cards have been provided at the doors, just outside the doors, uh, for the convenience of audience members wishing to speak during that time. Uh, the board asks anyone wishing to comment, fill out a card and indicate the topic to be addressed. These can be placed in the basket on the table to my right. Uh, they'll be used to assist us in allocating time so that all that wish to speak will have the opportunity to speak and will also help us follow up after the meeting. Um, so please fill out one of these cards if you wish to speak. Uh, next we is the recognition of student council officers. We would like to formally recognize the students who were elected and are presently serving in leadership roles on their student councils in District 58 for the 2018-19 school year. Uh, following that, we have the spotlight on our schools uh, regarding professional learning, planning, and evaluation. We, Justin and I wanted to spend a, a little bit of time tonight talking about what professional learning in District 58 looks like now in 2018-19, as well as what our next steps are. So we, on our first slide, we selected some quotes that we feel um, describe what we believe and what we want to move toward. We all know the powerful impact that quality professional learning and collaboration can have on student learning. Um, and over the years, we have tried a variety of different formats. Um, we refer to, again, the, the research on what is effective and what makes quality professional learning that really leads to growth in teacher development. Um, and that's that ongoing, collective, collaborative, it's job embedded. Um, so we, we felt this was important, kind of the where are we going piece to it. The, as you know, we have our district-wide institute days. That's the pretty traditional, the four allowable days from the state, from the county, in the calendar. In um, planning for these days, we begin working, I would say, by January the year prior and really work with our principal team, our teachers, at grade level meetings to get that feedback on those most important priorities of where we need more support as we're building the, and planning for that upcoming year. Uh, you can see our topics. I won't read through all of them. I think it is, um, they're all topics that our board has been hearing about quite a bit tied to our strategic plan and our, and our goals. For this year, Two of our in-service days, the November and the March day, um, we've structured as a format to be a balance of forced choice or forced sessions, required sessions, such as the one on professional learning, the next generation science standards, and then a balance also of some choice sessions where we surveyed staff and then are putting together um, activities for that day so teachers can select what they would like to learn more about based on where they are in their learning. In addition to those four, the County Institute days, we have four half days in our calendar. Um, those of you who have been on the board for a number of years, you know that number of days has changed, increased and decreased. Uh, we have four for this coming year, as well as that teacher work day, that collaboration day. And we really continue to feel these days are just so valuable to our staff being able to get the, the training, the support, have that collaboration opportunity to be prepared um, and to really grow as educators. For this year, we have our topics included, again, tied to the strategic plan, tied to our district goals, our building goals. And then as we think about related services, and actually on that last slide, I should have mentioned the targeted staff development, our specialist groups. You know, we need to plan for our teachers, PE teachers, music teachers, where they're not going to attend the ELA session or the Next Generation Science Standards, um, as well as the related services groups. So what we've tried to do the um, best we can is really tailor their learning specific to their role. For art, music, and PE, that would look more like time together to work on curriculum development, um, assessment strategies, instructional strategies. With our related services under Jessica Stewart's leadership, she plans and works with each of her groups the nurse team, psychologist team, social work, and really the, it's those groups that identify what are those biggest priorities for our learning for the upcoming year. And so for this school year, we have the topics identified, again, by those teacher groups um, in the variety of areas, health system development, obviously for our nurses, risk assessment, 
We have a training been provided through the um, National Alliance for Mental Illness and then Childhood Apraxia for Speech. So these are really the targeted learnings identified from goals from our teachers. We have our grade level collaboration meetings for teachers in kindergarten through sixth grade. So these are three half days where <coughs> we sub those teachers out and we have all of the kindergarten teachers come together as a group and then all of the first grade teachers on another morning or afternoon. And we also include with that um, reading specialists, resource teachers, and instructional coaches each join uh, one of those meetings. And this provides us with an opportunity to do a number of things. Um, First of all, it's a time three times throughout the year where we have everyone together. So sometimes there are messages that we want to deliver consistently, like the learning around the Every Student Succeeds Act. And so we did a condensed version of what the board has heard a couple of times for teachers to make sure that we're building that awareness. But more, um, it's a chance for us to really tailor some of that learning to what's happening at your grade level. So as we're working through our ELA implementation, this is a great moment for all of our fourth grade teachers to talk about how that's actually going in their classrooms and share strategies and, and, and learn from each other and, you know, in, a, in a very meaningful and collaborative way. And I think that's, you know, we also try to balance, there is some degree of, I wouldn't call it unstructured, but there is benefit to just having time to talk with your grade level colleagues and, and learn from what they're doing. So as we go through all of these kinds of topics and more on these half days, we also, um, as Jane mentioned, we're, we're always looking to the teachers to help drive that agenda. In fact, these agendas are open documents that teachers can add to throughout the course of the year. So that as we're approaching the next meeting in January, we'll hopefully have ongoing topics from from a first grade teacher or from a fourth grade teacher that we can discuss specifically um, at those meetings. Middle school doesn't have that same structure. It, it wouldn't make sense to have all the seventh grade teachers together, right, because they're specialized in, in content areas. So that type of learning and those moments for middle school are captured more through the, the regular department meetings. These happen on, you know, about <coughs> two months, depending on the way the calendar uh, works out. They're shorter, they're typically held before school, um, and they're facilitated by the department leaders at each middle school. So the science department leader will build the agenda and facilitate the learning with the support of the building administration for those groups. And, and again, this is a chance for them to talk through instructional strategies, to look at the resources, to talk about, about curricular things and then best practice in teaching, to look at student data, and, and again, sometimes to just talk about how things are going with what we're doing. You know, we've got middle school sciences piloting some resources right now, so those moments give them a chance to just touch base and, and talk through how they're going to approach that and, and what kinds of things they're experiencing through those. Uh, we do have some opportunities for feedback from all of these different types of experiences. So we wanted to share with you a few actual quotes that came back from some of the exit slips that from, from the many hundreds of exit slips that teachers have filled out uh, so far this year. And so I, I won't go through and read all of those, but certainly there are, there are some themes that come through about having time to discuss about having the space to learn from each other. And, you know, and, it, and it ties back to that, that quote that was on the, one of the first slides that Jane mentioned. It's, 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 a, it's learning, we're, this is work we're doing with the adults in our system. This is professional learning for our teachers and our staff. But it's really about kids. All of this translates directly back into the classroom as soon as the next moment the teachers are back in. They're, they're learning and implementing from one another and, and, from, and from experts in curriculum sometimes and from other things like that. There's different types of trainings that happen, but it's that conversation. And then, you know, that, that last quote is, is definitely a paraphrase, but it's a theme that, that, that recurs uh, throughout many, many of the pieces of feedback that we receive. So as we process all of that, um, you know, Jane mentioned we, we have created some choice in some of the institute days. One of the ways we solicit feedback is, is just to simply ask for it. We sent a form out um, in early October that said if you were, if you would like to present a session to your colleagues, let us know. And we have, um, gotcha, I won't get the number, we have between 20 and 30 teacher-led sessions that were just on a voluntary basis, a topic I'd like to present and share with my colleagues um, for this November day. Uh, and also we asked the question, if you were going to attend a session, if you had some choice in what you would learn about, what do you, what do you want to spend some time on? And obviously, it, it's difficult to meet every individual response at that level, but it gives us an idea of what are the things that, that, that our, our teachers are going to want to spend some of that time on. If they're going to be there anyway, it, it's good to have some of that. I mentioned the exit slips, and, and that then is processed both by our administrative team and eventually by the Communications Feedback Council as we're looking at all of those pieces of feedback. You know, the exit slips have some open-ended questions like you saw the quotes from, but there's also a, sort of a, a Likert scale for each one of how productive was this, what voices were heard, how, how much new learning was this for you, and, and those kinds of questions. So we can really get a, an idea system-wide over the course of the year as to, as to how these days are being received by, by the people whom they're planning for. 
Um, we have the Professional Learning Council that will uh, that had its first meeting just last week, and again, that group uh, comes out of strategic planning and, and is kind of charged with looking at the overall big picture around professional learning and how we're offering it, and in what format and when. Uh, and, and again, we're getting you know, feedback from all of those areas, including places like the Curriculum Council, who's talking about the, the, the learning that will be around the eventual adoption of new curricular resources and things like that. And as Jay mentioned, by January of this year, we're starting the plans for next year. And, and not to, um, to get ahead of the feedback we'll share from some of our strategic plan working groups uh, next month, but some of, you know, a lot of the early conversations with, with these groups that are talking about professional learning really comes down to that, what was that last quote on the previous slide, to, to do all of this well, to recognize the work that we have ahead of us as a district. Our teachers are, are, are excited and engaged, um, but it, it's, it's gonna take looking at how do we continue to capture even more time in a way that, that doesn't pull teachers out of the classroom even more than we already are. Because right now, between committee work and, and these days that we're talking about, they're all valuable. But um, we know that there's, that there's even more to do and even more that we can do and even more that we want for our teachers and that they want for themselves so that we can continue to optimize the learning experiences for our kids. So that's just, we're, we're, we're in the discussion stages about what could that look like and what are some ways we could try to capture some of that time. And we expect to be sharing more on that as the months go on. So that's the end of our uh, presentation, but obviously if there are any questions, Jane and I are happy to speak um, So Justin, the, on slide eight, you talk a lot about the benefits of ongoing collaboration, professional learning, and there's a lot, obviously a lot of excitement there and enthusiasm from the staff. Um, if, as we look at the exit, slip, exit slips um, and, and pour over the, the feedback that we're getting from the teachers, what, aside from the strengths that we see, what opportunities are there for us to be continuously improving our professional learning? You know, generally speaking, I think the, the increase of, of receive of trying to solicit feedback and making sure that um, decisions around professional learning and things like that are, are, are made openly and communicated broadly. I think that's that's a little bit, that's an opportunity that we continue to work on. I think that's what our, you know, soliciting the feedback looks like. Again, I think really um, the I, the theme that comes through, I really, I don't want to keep using the word time, but it's, it, it really is just that time to, you know, we put together an agenda that, that's pretty robust in most cases. And I think that if we could add another couple of hours where teachers had even more of that time to, to, to talk through just kind of, how's it going? You know, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the feedback we get. The, the, the challenge is, of course, that we want that time to be meaningful for everybody. And not everyone can process in that moment, you know, to be able to, to respond and meaningfully engage. So we're, we're always working to balance soliciting all of that feedback and putting enough structure to all of these days that it allows for preparation and, and, and enough openness to the days that it allows for teachers to have some of that, that time that they're looking for. Okay, I don't know if you have anything. Yeah. And I was going to mention the part of our conversations with that time, uh, the possibilities of exploring late start, early dismissal. Um, I know the concerns around that, but that continues to come from our, from our staff should really do what we're going to accomplish and do well. Justin, maybe not you, this might be better um, communicated by James, but I saw on the, the agenda the one-to-one -one training and that there was Apple delivered. Can you talk a little bit more about what specifically that, that will involve, at least in the November training? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so each elementary, so each student that works with elementary, each teacher that works with elementary students, uh, it's kind of broad, but it is, it is being asked to choose from a couple of different set, uh, options. And that is actually um, Apple retail offers for free. That's what I learned a little bit at the, at the curriculum workshop. So we're still actually saving some of our paid hours, uh, our, our paid professional development time with Apple professional learning. Uh, and so they're going to uh, lead some sessions. Uh, uh, one of them is on fostering creativity with iPads. Another one is on that's called Everyone Can Create with Video. And that utilizes uh, not only a new app that we're it's been out for over a year now. We weren't able to use last year on over iPad, but now that we're on iOS 11 to 12, we use it's called Clips. Uh, so you, you guys have actually seen a few Clips videos here uh, created at, at board meetings. So it's a really exciting way for students to quickly create videos, um, perhaps in the year than the time when we uh, was. So, so there was actually a third session on Keynote, but uh, based on the interest, we've got to shift the things back to those other two. So those will be two hour, approximately, the two. 55-minute sessions that are, that are kind of back-to-back, -back, that almost two-hour 
have slot to be able to get you know, a, a little more. I think one of the pieces of feedback we heard on the August day was that it was a little bit rushed. So we tried to hit a lot of things in the, you know, in the one really busy day. Uh, so we, we made the point to set aside a longer time block uh, to allow for a little bit more of a deeper experience. And the teachers will be asked to, to download and have one of the iBooks that's associated with that program ready, assuming that the, the Apple retail uh, group does. When they do these sessions frequently, actually, at Apple stores. So come into our district on uh, one of these professional learning days and deliver these sessions. Does that, does that answer your question specific to the, the 26? Yes. Okay. Just to tag on that, I, I saw that there was some one-to-one -one on a couple different areas on the district-wide days and then also on the, on the um, individual grade school days at the school. So would those be different training sessions or would there be some overlap there or? Uh, so there, there will be different sessions. So when you say the individual, uh, the, the, grade, the, the grade level, the yeah, it was listed yeah. on the grade level, and it was yes. also listed at, under the district wide. Yes, uh, yeah, th those, well. those will be different. Um, you know, we had once in the grade level meetings, and we did um, right, primarily we focused on some uh, tie-ins with the new ELA um, resource. You know, again, you know, the thing that you heard Justin and I talking about doing a lot is really trying tie the two together. So while we're talking about benchmark and studies, we're also talking about uh, how the technology can be used to enhance and accelerate the self experience. Uh, for the January day, uh, the technology committee has been, the innovative learning and technology committee has been working, uh, it's been working really hard to actually kind of squeeze an extra meeting in to try to develop uh, develop some sample lessons you know, that, that we can then offer professional learning for um, all K through sixth grade level teachers. Now, this is a project experience that all sixth grade students can have, and all fifth grade students can have, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so we have a meeting actually this week where we're hoping to kind of finalize that work and have things ready for the January grade level meetings so we can have that professional learning opportunity for, for teachers. Again, we get some, we one, get some consistency. So we're seeing some similar types of work done across the school districts, uh, across the schools, and provide uh, those opportunities for, for all teachers. So that's so they are different. I guess right. would have been the short answer. Yeah, thank you. No, okay, thank you. We appreciate you working on trying to get some more time on that as well. I think that's something that everybody on the board is, is but hoping we can figure out for a while. So thank you. Next listed on tonight's agenda are 26 communications received by the board. Are there any additional communications board members would like to share at this time? Okay, if not, we will go to the superintendent report with Dr. Kremskoli. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the school board um, on November 15th. It is school board member day here in Illinois. And, um, we know how much time you put into this job of yours. On behalf of our, our students and our schools, our staff and our community, we'd like to thank you and, and recognize your service for our community. Thank you. Um, we, we heard quite a bit about professional development uh, today. So November 26th is Teacher Institute. So that's Monday after the Thanksgiving holiday week. We're doing something new this year with that whole week off for our students and our, our faculty as well. Um, and then the, the, the faculty will come back on Monday for Institute Day. Um, as you heard, there's some required sessions depending on teacher assignments. Um, next Gen Science Standards instruction is one element that's required for many of our teachers along with the instructional technology from Apple. Um, we also have some restorative practices and behavioral strategies for our middle school teachers. And then um, we'll also be holding a facility planning visioning session. Um, as well, and, and our hope there is to get some feedback from all of our teachers and kind of just to get them starting to think about um, many of the um, opportunities that lie ahead for the district and, and providing some input to the Facility Planning Council as we really start to envision um, what opportunities exist within our buildings and we build out that master facility plan. So we're, we're really excited about that opportunity to be able to um, reach each of our faculty members and hear from them directly. Um, on that note, we have some facility, uh, a brief facility planning council update. 
um, our FPC met last week to review the initial phases of the facility visioning sessions and to discuss plans for next steps. Our architects are right now reviewing all of the reports and information that they have available to them. They'll be doing some building tours and our school facilities will also be, um, the, the staff there will be providing some feedback. Our principals with one or two staff members will be walking through and, and responding to some um, some prompts from our architects regarding some additional information that they need to gather. All that information will come back to the FPC and we still are um, eager to have an update provided to the board in January from the architects. Um, there is much work to be accomplished um, and a lot of moving pieces in this regard, but um, we're excited about the early stages of our visioning session, so we'll look forward to um, an update to the board in January. Um, Student, staff, and parent surveys, as the board is aware, and hopefully our community is now too, because I know Megan sent out uh, some messages. Um, we have our surveys happening right now. We have our school environment survey, um, which offers both quantitative and qualitative responses um, for our parents to, to respond to. And then we also have the five essentials survey. We provided that link to our parents this year. That is the survey that's um, offered by the state. Um, and then that survey also goes to our teachers and to our students. Um, we just were notified today that uh, the timeline for that survey got pushed back a little bit. Uh, we're not sure what that delay is caused by, but we um, are getting information out uh, because our teachers will need to push, that, push back their um, assessment window um, for taking the measure and for administering it to our students. Um, Another topic, water testing has been happening within our district. As the board is aware, we uh, initiated water testing for this year in each of our buildings on October 30th. We expect, expect results later this week. If not later this week, um, hopefully early next week, we have plans to communicate out those results as well as remediation plans as soon as we uh, possibly can there. Um, Another element that's happening in our district this week, we have our Illinois State Board of Education Accreditation Audit for our preschool program, so we'll have some visitors uh, in our schools. Um, the board will recall that we acquired the gold level status of our preschool programs um, in recent years, last time we were audited, and so we're, we're eager to show off some of what we're doing in our classrooms now and, and hope we'll be able to maintain that. Um, we have a, a board, an executive board of the DGEA meeting happening on um, November 15th in the afternoon. So thank you to those board members and those DGEA members who will join us for that event. Um, our Education Foundation grants, uh, we, the Education Foundation was able to award just over $8,000 to teachers. Uh, those are for grants. Um, grant applications are submitted kind of near the beginning of the school year, and um, those are for innovative practices or needs that occur within our buildings. Um, and teachers are invited to submit grant applications to the foundation. The foundation is very generous in, in awarding those grants, and, and we expect to have a report to the board in December on those grants and what was awarded. We're very appreciative for that support. Um, and then finally, I also want to acknowledge and thank Justin and our principals for um, their tour around all of our schools for the ESSA parent forums. Um, those parent forums really, I think, provided parents who had more questions a great opportunity to come out and learn more. Um, some were attended a little bit better than others, um, but I think for those who took the time to attend and, and had the opportunity, um, they, they really came away with some additional information, some more perspective. Um, and the opportunity to ask some questions one-on-one. -on -one. So, so the, that was really great and a, a huge time commitment by Justin, uh, but also from our principals as well. So thank you for that. Um, and the presentations, if they're not yet posted, will be posted online so that people can go on and, and review if they didn't have the opportunity to attend in person. Uh, those presentations will be available for uh, parent <coughs> review if they, if they wish. And I think that is end of my report. Are there any questions from board members? The pre-K audit, <clears throat> I think there was a window between like November 4th and 
some other date later in November. Does that just mean that they will randomly pop in at any window during that time? Yes, <coughs> that's exactly right. And, and it's a, a bit unfortunate because um, for us, it, it does require some staff to um, escort them and to be available to answer their questions. And so um, I was hearing from our preschool coordinator, Jacqueline Bedard, uh, late last week that she had to kind of rearrange her schedule so that um, they don't tell us they're coming, they tell us the window. And then she has to be available a half hour before they're set to arrive. And if they arrive that day, then she has to kind of scramble and make sure they're subs and, and uh, rearrange her schedule. And if they don't arrive, well, then it just means that maybe the next day they will arrive. Um, so I, I know their intention in doing that is to have it be somewhat unannounced for our staff. It does make it a little bit problematic in running a school and you know, all of our administrators are incredibly busy throughout their day. So to preserve that amount of time um, and be flexible enough to cancel or reschedule things um, can be a little bit daunting, but um, our preschool team, uh, thank you to them for, for making that possible. So I don't know, um, Jessica, if you have an update, if they've actually been in yet or not. No, we're still so waiting. We're still waiting. <laughs> so we hope they show up during the window because we <laughs> don't want to have to do another window. <coughs> they Thanks. will. Thank you. Good question. Okay, thank you. And uh, Todd is ready. Yes. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, this time of year, you would normally see uh, our independent auditors up here to present to you the audit. That is not the case this year. Um, there was an error some month ago or so discovered in a report on TRS and the health insurance system that the state creates that is required for all districts to take from that report information to complete our audits. So every district in the state of Illinois that, it, that files above regulatory level, which is most, or if not, yeah, just most, uh, particularly in this area, uh, cannot present an audit yet because the auditors cannot sign off. Uh, that information, that new report should be, uh, last note from the Inspector General was to be delivered by mid-November. So we hope that uh, at the December meeting, we will have the auditors here to present uh, the audit uh, for fiscal year 18 that ended June 30th. Um, so there's that piece. Uh, as far as year to date, uh, you have uh, in your uh, board packet the revenue and expenses year to date. Um, we are trending as we should and within comparison to last year. Um, the little lag in revenue is, again, due to the early revenue structure from the prior year, uh, but expenses are coming in line uh, as, as with the previous year. You have two, another page in there uh, that has um, a little bit different look. It's a variance report and then a ratio with a graph. And uh, we worked on this and, and, and put this together and presented it on Friday morning with the, uh, facil uh, the Finance Advisory Committee. And it's a, a tool for us to look, and, and, and we will use it this year and look at it to see what value it is. Uh, it tracks our expense and revenue against uh, a year, an average of our year to date uh, for the, the last three years. Uh, so it takes those, those last three fiscal years, where those are at a year to date, uh, and then the variances on that. And then we created an expense to revenue ratio uh, for the current year and then for the average of those three years to see if we are in line. And, and as of right now, uh, we are in line, that our uh, expenses are under our revenue. Um, that is because our, we get our half of our good portion of our revenue at the beginning of the year and 38, 40% of our revenue at the end of the year. So that ratio right now is about 0.58. Uh, which is revenue over expenses. So anything under one is revenue over expenses. Anything greater than one, expenses have exceeded our, our revenue to date and we're into our fund balance. And so you'll see that that's going to switch as the fiscal year goes on because there is a time where revenue stops uh, or at least the large portion of the property taxes and we're waiting for that, that uh, second installment, or that first installment of the next year to come. So um, we will keep that um, 
piece out there and update it each month uh, for the board and, and then we'll continue to review that with the financial advisory committee um, at their every other month meeting so so that so that graph you have on there that's a snapshot and in a month snapshot Just snapshot <coughs> year to date yes so and uh, that just kind of gives us a using that three-year average of the last fiscal years you know kind of gives us a sense to see if we are where we're at in line with what has been our average for the last three years um, and and so you know where we're at so um, you also there was a, a uh, information item uh, that we in your packet about the summer work though we have some payments out to be you know that are not settled um, we have some residuals to pay out and some some pieces on the construction for summer for 2018 we uh, are projecting that at this point we'll be about two hundred thousand dollars under uh, that budget uh, plan uh, you know there is con with large capital items there's contingency into those budgets for unforeseen circumstances uh, we have not had to use those uh, we've found some ways that you know have adjusted we've come in under budget uh, for the capital work so that is good news uh, so we want to report that out and then we will be looking to see uh, I you know before those bonds were issued there was a list of capital items uh, priority list uh, and so we will be looking to see uh, what those are coming up and, and what what's available and bringing something back to the board at a later date as to what you know recommendations and suggestions for those as well as uh, you know other things so uh, and then this uh, month you have uh, for approval the tax levy uh, this is the largest um, revenue source for the district uh, and this is the time of year where we uh, have to uh, put those in place so that we can get those filed with the county clerk by the last Tuesday in December um, we we are limited uh, by law by a consumer price index which is 2.1 percent for this year plus whatever new construction gives us we believe that we will be somewhere a little over three percent um, when we get the reports in the spring we don't know what new construction is due to a supreme court decision we don't know what impact that may or may not have on any exempt revenue though it did not change significantly exempt property it did have some nuances of change that may affect some things and new construction coming on from that exempt status so to reserve uh, the district's rights into that piece we are suggesting uh, a 4.9 uh, percent levy obviously we only get what we're allowed under the law uh, with the CPI and the new construction uh, but this is just um, I explained to the financial advisory committee this is kind of ensuring against the one black the, the, the black swan you know, uh, the one out of 10,000 things that may happen um, you know we don't expect it but didn't want to uh, miss on that if, if something came up so uh, that is a recommendation um, it's a little bit different from what our discussion was last month and so we wanted to point that out I think one quick side note for, for board members that new board members uh, is that this is something that's been done since I've been on the board. Is, uh, we've always over you overshoot the the county isn't going to let you get more than what you are able to with the CPI and the new construction, but you want to capture every dollar. So <clears throat> this is something that we've done every year. So that's the uh, that's all I have. If there's any questions, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on tonight's agenda is the policy committee with Member Harris. Thank you. Um, we met on October 16th at the ASC at 7 a.m. in the morning to talk about policy. We are continuing to update our board policy manual um, and bringing it out of its. Um, more antiquated format and, and bring it more in alignment with the press. Um, for first reading tonight, we bring you a number of policies that um, show that, that new alignment, and as well as um, there are some um, recommendations for deletion of any policies that um, are made redundant due to 
the um, alignment work. Uh, same, same kind of report as, as I've been giving the last couple times. Uh, <laughs> anything else I need to add, Jill or no. Carrie? Thank you for your continued <laughs> work on that. That's a, that's a long yeah. process. Great. Yeah, Craig, are the, the two new policies just related to things that came out of press that we just didn't currently have in our system? Um, Salary placement program and the it's um, we're just the, the updates are we're just notifying parents of the opportunity and uh, we're just putting in procedures that are um, that require us to to um, post that on the, the website and I think that's um, due to some recent legislation legislative changes is that right right there were some recent legislative changes just saying so that you to draft this one and yeah, but there are two separate things. There's, there's revision to policy that we that we talked about that, that it was what Member Harris was referring to. These two policies are actually new and, and just speak to things that we have had in place as a district that align with that legislation, but we simply didn't have board policy to reflect the procedures that were already in place. So these procedures, this policy brings us up to speed with new legislation and aligns with policy. Any other questions? Comments? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so is there a motion to approve for first reading the following draft policies and place them on the December board meeting agenda for final approval? <clears throat> number 400, recruitment. Number 4,000, 4, recruitment. Number 4,001, non discrimination. Number 4,001.1, harassment. Number 4,007, drug and alcohol free workplace. Number 4,008, employee suspension. Number 4,100 terms and conditions of employment. Number 4,121 substitute teachers. Number 5,101.1 age of entrance to kindergarten. Number 5,101.2 age of entrance to first grade. Number 5,111 student promotion. Number 6,130 program for the gifted. And number 6,135 accelerated placement program. Is there a motion to approve for first reading those policies? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried to approve for first reading draft policies 4000, 4001, 4001.1, 4007, 4008, 4100, 4121, 5101.1, 5101.2, 5111, 6130, and 6135. Is there a motion to approve for first reading the deletion of the following policies as no longer necessary and place them on the December board agenda for final deletion? Number 4006, use of tobacco, and number 4141.1, compensation for substitute teachers. So moved. Second. Any discussion? It's just, these are just reflected in the new ones above. I mean, when I first saw deletion of tobacco, I was like, well, <laughs> could it be simple enough to just say, I mean, I, I know we got a list and list and list, but like for tobacco, it's just tobacco, smokeless or, or not, it's just not allowed on any school property. I mean, we kind of go on and on, but. It's never that simple, Joe. It's never that simple? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just one of the things I've observed as a parent, and I don't know how you enforce this, but um, we let the park district use a lot of our property, and especially, you know, some of the fields. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll have a parent or somebody out there smoking, and, and it's, I mean, can, can we ask the park district, since they use it, like, on their parks they post it, could they post on, like, the fence posts, like, where the ball fields or the soccer, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not smoking? Because I know they're not school events, but they're still on school property. I just don't think people should be smoking on school property. So we certainly could ask the park district. We could also probably increase our signage if that's a, an area of concern. Um, those, those evening and weekend events are hard, certainly for us to monitor and, and patrol, but um, possibly some increased signage could help with that. So um, I can reach out to the park district and, and see if that's something. Because if you go to the parks, like on the back stops, they'll use it or you know, Doug Alex or wherever. Right. They'll usually have a little sign, but right. since they don't own our property, they don't right. do that. I would think it would be common sense. And, you know, <laughs> you remind me very good that common sense isn't always common. <laughs> but it, it just a, yeah. just something I noted, and while I saw it here, I was like, yeah, I remember telling somebody, and he says, there's no sign, and I'm like, yes, there is it. <laughs> <laughs> 50 kids running around should be signing off. Right. <laughs>
I'm happy to follow up with the Park District and with our team on that as well. Thanks, Jim. Uh, any more discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried to approve for first reading and deletion of policies 4006, 41, 41.1 as no longer necessary to place them on the December board agenda for final deletion. Uh, the Legislative Committee did not meet in October. Financial Advisory Committee, uh, John Miller? We did meet in the, I'm trying to figure out what you didn't cover there. Um, <laughs> except that we had a, a good turnout, we, um, 20, 20 members on there. We actually had the, 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 the square table um, <coughs> ran out of seats. So it was nice to see the, mm -hmm. that committee built back up the interest um, community and various uh, groups on that um, so it, it's good it, you know, it's a good sounding board and that's what we want it to be we want that to be um, not a report out committee but something where um, financial information can be bounced off people that um, have a, an objective view or a different view from whatever they do in their private uh, lives so I thought it's good I was, I was happy to see the turnout and good comments uh, Pat, I think you're making good progress. Darren, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but I think that was pretty much all because we talked about the, everything on the list here. So. Yeah, just the ongoing work that's being done in there on the with all the documents that you've been creating to kind of give us higher visibility, and I think we had a lot of good back and forth on that. A lot on your faces, so that was great. Good, thank you. Um, the district leadership team did not meet in October, but their next meeting is November 27th. Uh, next on the agenda is a discussion regarding methods of recording board meetings and communication. Dr. Permisco? Absolutely. Um, so this is an issue that the board has grappled with for a number of years, but um, in earnest it, over the last couple of months has, has talked about and wanted us to uh, seek options for video mm -hmm. recording. I'll share with the board too that the Community Advisory Council um, has also talked a little bit about uh, this topic and um, was interested in, in exploring some of these options as well. So um, what we've done, and, and James, thank you for your help in pulling together these options. James uh, reviewed um, what options might be available for recording and has pr provided to the board a summary of those two options. Um, he has posted here just for discussion's purpose. Um, the two options that seem most viable to us. Uh, one of those options, um, obviously, here at the village, um, they do have some recording features. There's some costs associated with using those, um, those elements, some staffing costs, et cetera, um, and then some, some uh, follow-up work that we would need to do. Um, and then there's also the option of having an outside agency do it, uh, do the recording for us, and then they would post it directly. Um, for um, comparison's sake, the Village of Downers Grove obviously does uh, their recording and posting using their services here. All their meetings are held here. We don't hold all of our meetings here. Um, District 99 recently, uh, somewhat recently in, in recent history, started uh, using Sunrise Communications to uh, record and post their um, meetings, and they've had good success with that as well. So, so really these are two options, and for the board, um, first, you'll need to discuss and consider whether or not this is uh, video recording and posting of meetings is something you want to pursue, considering that there, there is a cost certainly associated with that. Um, and then secondly, if you want to pick one of these two or if you want us to do some additional research and pick one, um, ultimately it would, it would need to be a, a direction from the board to initiate um, recording of board meetings so that we could make those public more more publicly available for those who might not be able to join us in the evening time here. I think this is one of the things we've talked about before and one of the reasons coming to this facility is so that we could uh, could maybe take advantage of it. It was just mm -hmm. kind of one of the steps in the process. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about it sitting over in Longfellow um, that if we could uh, come to the village hall it might be easier to accommodate that. So you know, I, I think that's that's good. And any any um, any one of these options, uh, I would just like to to ask if there's a way that we could track it. How many? I, I don't care who does it. I would just like to know how many people. And when we do mm -hmm. it, it'd be nice to know. Do we have a hundred people that view these, or one person that views it? I'm 
guessing that would be available if somebody logs in and goes on and be able to see it. But it'd be nice to see what, if we go down that road, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but it'd be nice to know. The analytics behind yeah, the how analytics. many people are watching it or yeah, how they're watching it. I'm just curious. And I don't know if we know from the 99 if they have any idea, but I, I look at the 99 once every, every once in a while, so mm -hmm. I'm curious what's, what's going on. Mm -hmm. I would be for you know, moving forward. There's a preference. I mean, you could always start with the downers program and see how that works. And we're here and see what the uptake is before we go. And if we want to expand it to our meetings at the other school, we could always, I'm guessing it wouldn't be a contract with the village where you'd have to do it for three years. I mean, if, it, if we get some uptake for six months, the village one works fine. We'll see. As I get it, when we have it at the other schools, it may not be it. Which would you see as preferable? Not recording the workshops at the schools or just having every we meeting here? Yeah, either, either one. I, you know, this is this is the you know, the, 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 the business meeting uh, one. We always have audio recording too, so mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't that I don't always know. But sometimes, quite frankly, looking at some of the village videos and looking at District Ninety Nine, I'm, I'm actually not watching it. I'm listening to it most of the time. Um, so I, I really don't know if paying more for additional video on, on some of these is is, is necessary. Um, if they're just they're just a workshop, but it's, it, I, you know, I'm curious to see what I can support you. Well, I took the time to, to kind of review I, the Sunrise Communications one because I've seen many of the, the village ones. I, the advantage, I think, to using the village one, should we go down this path, is, is it's sort of hooked up for that, you know, and I think that visually it's a little bit better, but Sunrise Communications sounded a lot better. Uh, it was much easier to hear. So. Um, though that could have been the meeting facility that it, that it was a part of, but I also am concerned right here would be very inconspicuous with the way the cameras are set up. I don't know what their setup would look like to, you know, would it work well in this space? I think that would be, an, you know, an interesting thing to ask um, a district that uses um, Sunrise. Um, more than anything, more than the video itself, I, I, I think the ideal thing would be the opportunity to to pinpoint specific locations in a meeting. Sometimes it, there might be something that we want to highlight in, in the communication that we have going out. And I think that's an advantage to this, but I think at a minimum, even if we didn't go video, that we have to find a better way to produce audio. Um, mm. As far as, mm -hmm. um, to me, that's our biggest part more than anything else, is if in a single location, people can find the, a way to hear, jump to a certain point in time, and see the, right. the materials. I think that's more important than than seeing us, but I think that video is a good opportunity to do that if mm -hmm. we find that it um, that it's reasonable. I am concerned about jumping into a three-year commitment right. with Sunrise um, out of the gate, especially not knowing how popular uh, it would necessarily be. Uh, so, you know. We originally came here to Village Hall on a test run to begin with to see if the facility kind of met our needs. Mm -hmm. And that's why we didn't talk about it in that first year. Um, if we were going to do video, it might be a good opportunity to test run that as well to see what the, um, the benefit is to our community and to see if there really is people that really enjoy uh, getting it through that method before we kind of do any long-term commitment. Because the Sunrise was a little bit more uh, expensive as well. Yeah, but it did go all the way to you, you know, YouTube automatically, and there's a, there's a couple advantages. But you know, I I think I might want to understand, and maybe you can help me. I don't need to understand today. Is the having the DVD sent to us mm -hmm. and then having to upload it? How much of a lag time does that add into our ability to to get the video up? And then we have to make a decision whether that lag time is worth the extra. When I did my back the envelope, like twenty two hundred dollars difference between the village and Sunrise a year, mm -hmm. and the three-year commitment worries me a little. Um, truthfully, my preference would be to move all of our meetings here uh, versus having our workshops in other locations. I think it's easier to hear and to see and to be comfortable with seats and, and for a lot of different reasons, but I know that the dates don't work. But, the, but that would, rather than not videotaping workshops, and my preference would be, if it worked, to, to start having everything consistently and do everything the same way. 
Mm -hmm. I think there are advantages to that. Uh, but but I'm, Darren, I'm sort of with you. I, I'd rather test it for a few months and, and make sure that it's worth the $5,000 that, that, that it'll cost going forward before we committed to a $7,000 a year expense, not necessarily knowing how much value we're going to get from it. Right. Um, but th that's, that's me. So I'd like to see it at a minimum some better way to consume our meetings for the people that can't make it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, w whether it needs to be video and, and YouTube and stuff like that, I think that's why test one would be good from my perspective. So what I'm hearing is we have interest from some of the board members in, as a trial run, starting to record our regular board meetings that take place here at Village Hall for a period of a few months, just to see. And then we can look at the analytics and see, are we getting five people watching them, or 100 or 500, we can make a decision whether it's, it's um, we're getting the return on our investment that would allow us to continue it. Yeah, I think it's difficult to um, sign up for the three years until we right. know what the right. consumption rate is. Mm -hmm. Are you are you okay with that? Right. I like the idea of a trial run. Um, I'm. I was talking to James earlier that I'm interested in seeing how much the current audio files get in terms of hit rates, uh, just to see what we would be, what benchmark we're going to be comparing to. At the end of the day, we're <clears throat> not debating a significant dollar amount relative to other costs, um, and so. <clears throat> I like the idea of trying it out. Um, I think even if there's a nominal bump in terms of viewers, I think that's a worthwhile investment for getting getting out the message and having people being able to transparently see what we're up to. Um, uh, one thing that I'd love to think through, uh, or if it already exists, I, I don't consume our, uh, our, our meetings because I'm here, um, but I'm wondering if there's a like podcast channel that we can do to post our audio. I consume all of my like content through podcasts. I'm wondering if that's an opportunity for us to do that, so it's easily consumable by a typical means instead of going to a, a website to listen to an audio file. That was actually going to be my question to you, James. Not specifically about being a podcast, but um, consuming our meetings, I think, isn't is difficult because mm -hmm. because meetings that I missed uh, prior to sitting on the board, I would listen to them and. You can down. You can find a way to download it, and you can you have a little bit more play there. But like, there is an ability to to go to a specific point or, or to pick up where you left off later and that kind of stuff. So have we we looked at good audio options as well? I think right now we're just kind of. Um, I think you said there's a third party that's posting in for us right now. You're not doing that directly, or no? No, we have. Uh, we we post them directly. Oh, you just okay. Yeah, the village sends me. Uh, the wave file, and I just upload it to Google Drive and, and, and post that link. So I, it really is the kind of the, it's free and it's and it's un, you know, unlimited hosting. So to I think to explore some other options for hosting to make it more allows you to carve it out or pinpoint certain points of track might be a little more. Clear. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, we could certainly I, you could probably put it on. You could probably put the audio on YouTube with a play and make it a, a, a video file with a like background. And, Times in a YouTube video. Uh, no, you certainly. Can, yeah. So we, we, we could certainly explore better options in the podcast. I mean, so we want to continue to explore audio. We absolutely could. Yeah. But there, well, are, there are better ways to do it. It's not something that, that I personally put a, much effort into at all. It's probably been, I'm, to be honest, I, I, I've been taking the files in front of the website. And it's kind of well, that's another option too, though, is if we get, if we're exploring this, then maybe we would get spectacular audio instead you know instead of videoing or in addition to um, there might be other formats so so for, for both of the are you, are you saying we might through this process we might get a better audio if we audio? explore we haven't explored better audio right mm -hmm. we, we, we have not and, and both of these uh, solutions really are video only and the village obviously we're using their equipment so the audio wouldn't change uh, and the Sunrise communications that they just tap into whatever audio audio right. apps. So inherent to these two, there, there wouldn't be any upgrade to the audio. That would have to be a separate, uh, separate exploration. Right. But the way I would think about it would be if we're going to spend some money to make the user experience better, 
perhaps the user experience will be better with just better audio and better options, whether it's a podcast or something else where you could pause it and come back later, maybe that would be a better experience than a video with the same audio that isn't great and you have to go into a website and you can't go back and find where you were and uh, I don't know. I mean, I just think that that's something to explore as well. I, I would love to see a world where we put them both where we approved both, and then actually we can then test to see what people prefer and, and right. use some feedback to, to understand that. Gee, is there any reason why the Village of Downers Grove video couldn't also be posted to YouTube and, and be accessed in that same? It, it, so it, it would be, uh, and I think in the, in the document on the agenda I mentioned, like so the, the, they both would end up on YouTube. I, I think just, it really is the mechanism of Sunrise as, as part of the process. They, both, they, they usually just ask for access. You know, to, to authenticate into our YouTube account, they just sign it and upload it for you, so it's done. The village would send us a DVD, and you ask them what the lag time. I, I have to confirm with the village exactly. I think they said it. They usually send it over the next day or two. I have to go back and check my notes to confirm that, and then someone, in, someone in my staff or, or the district team staff would um, would rip the video and post it to YouTube, which you know isn't a. It's a step. I mean, no doubt, it's not a super time consuming step, but but it would. I, I would say you're looking at, you know, let, let, let me check my notes to get you accurate uh, times on, on when we expect both to be posted. Uh, I'll, I'll plan on, on getting that information to, to Dr. Curtis because I don't want to give you inaccurate information. Well, it sounds like also from the board that maybe we would be interested in doing a trial run with the village cheaper option where we don't have, where we're not locking into a contract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and see how that goes. Is that fair to say? And I think fair to say pursuing both of those, the, the improved audio and the improved video, and then we can maybe just revisit in three months, I, I, I would think, and see what sort of hit rates we're having on both of them. And then we can judge better how time consuming it is. Because and that's what we need to factor in, right? It's a $2,000 difference, but if, that, but if we're taking away our employees and, and, and that's creating that same type of, uh, of cost, I mean, that we're losing the, 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 um, the FTE, then I, to me, it's not the $2,000 difference. It's, it was a three-year contract that, that concerned me. Um, so the other option is, of course, to have Sunrise Communications if they would give us a three-month trial. Presumably, they, they didn't offer that. I, but but it might be something they're willing to do, and, and and if they were willing to do that, is there a preference either way, on our on our end, which we would go with? Is, is it? I'd still probably myself want to explore the village first. Okay, and just see. And that's good. So really have to, it's already set up. So. I, I think the the biggest downfall. Well, there's a couple of downfalls. Just noteworthy of the village. One is they obviously can only do it here, so we will have to find another option for off-site uh, meetings or move as many meetings as we can here with the understanding that off-site meetings uh, would likely be audio recorded as has occurred in the past. Um, the second with using the village is just our staff time in getting that video, ripping it as James says, or putting it on to uploading it, however that happens, whatever that step is, to get it on online. Um, and if something happened in between there, you know, that, that just is, is some time from James and his, his staff, um, and we certainly want, wouldn't want that to happen. Um, James, did you say, is there, does Sunrise um, note throughout the video, I, I, I don't know the technical term, but note like where a discussion point starts, or we still would have to do that on either platform? Correct, the latter. On either platform, it's going to end up on YouTube, and, and the indexing of this discussion happened at this point in YouTube video would be that piece of Okay. Sorry. The thing is, if, if, we, if we go this route and then we have off-site ones where we have audio only, I think for me, I'd like to see us rip that as a video, even if it's just a still picture, so that our stuff is in a singular location. Okay, um, sure. I think that would make sense. Mm -hmm. If this is a trial run, I think that we should also take our audio files and dump them in the same location we've always kept them in case we decide not to continue down the video path, that we still have that history of audio files so um, people aren't, don't have to bounce back. Mm -hmm. You know, once we decide to f if we're going to fully flip over, then then we can um, 
have a note. Anything prior to this date will be over here. Anything mm -hmm. after will be here. But um, that's just something. If we're going to go with the village and we want to hold stuff off site, I think that we should consider still putting it up on YouTube so we can tag it and stuff mm -hmm. like we, we always do, even if there's not a video component to it. Okay, so uh, it sounds like exploring the option is a good one. It sounds like um, starting with the village as a, as a trial run, unless, of course, Sunrise is able to give us some kind of a, a short-term trial. It sounds like even then the consensus is they'd like to, we'd prefer to start with the village. Okay. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I'd like to hear the feedback on what the impact is um, to your team. Okay. <coughs> so we will work as a team. Um, I'm, I'm thinking January would be our, our first target date of trying to do a, a video test run. I'm not sure we'd be able to get it up and going by December, um, but targeting January, um, the coordination with the village, um, and we will give you an update in December as to whether or not that is likely to happen um, in January. Uh, I think that's great. To the extent that we could start with the audio in the meantime, uploading to YouTube and seeing if that's a possibility, it, the, the sooner we could do that, I think, the better. Mm. But but just because I I, I think the, the sooner we can make that available. The podcasting, I don't know as much about it. It's simply an intriguing option to, to do like the, the Apple Podcasts or other podcasting channels. I don't know as, I don't know as much about that, but I feel pretty confident that, that creating a video file with a you know, still image. So I, I think for, the, if you're at, for this meeting, I will make an effort to make the video file that's audio only and post that to, post that to YouTube. Uh, so we can, and we'll also with that, you can also be able to get analytics. Because um, I don't know, I, I haven't been able to track that for our previous meetings. Was, uh, as you'd ask, but if we can do that for, for at least this one meeting, we can get some people clicking through. So I, I will make an effort to have us take care of that. Yeah, that podcasting option could be a very inexpensive option. So I mean, that, that is something that we may want to know about, but, um, but I'm still looking to try and be. Think of all the village. young high school kids who would actually listen. They'd be really excited. Yeah. Yeah. They just subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to charge them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, dad, my dad can't find the app store on his phone, so yeah. we'll go with the younger well, generation. That, that, that one might take a little more time. I'll definitely of course. Think Absolutely. Yeah. The other one I think is, the YouTube one I think is quick and easy, the other one I will, I will learn about it and figure it out. Thank you. So then, the, the other thing we wanted to discuss under this umbrella, uh, Darren and I, as we mentioned, we're going to the district leadership team on November 27th, one, to get a sense from the board so that when we go to that leadership district leadership team, we can speak a little bit more freely on behalf of the board. In terms of, obviously, one of the things we've heard a lot is the need to make our communications more effective, to, to, to find ways to more consistently and better communicate all the good things that are going on in the district and, and where there are challenges and where, where there are things we need to just try and get that message out perhaps better and more clearly and more effectively. Um, when we go to the district leadership team, obviously one of the things they might ask is, that's great, but to, to do some of that, it might take a little bit of money. Um, so we want to get a sense from the board whether there's that willingness to spend some amount on, um, and I don't know what the amount that would be, but on some consulting services perhaps to bring in an expert to help us understand what might be needed to, to, to really improve in this area. Right. Did I say that right? You did. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Uh, so then we, we then we'll just open that up to the floor in, in terms of get some feedback from all of you. So then when we go back to the district leadership team, we can be speaking. Do we have any? Estimate on the amount? We haven't had the discussion. We want the approval to basically start having the conversation in the district leadership team um, because we, we feel that there is some gap there and, and there, we sort of get a feeling that there's a desire to bring in some expertise. Right. So um, we didn't want to start delving into that conversation if there was, if, if there was no desire amongst the rest of the board. Um, I hear what you're I, saying. I, I, I think it's a no brainer. Yes. Yeah. 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 If you're looking to develop a plan, then, yeah. Just, I don't see why that would be. I wouldn't do it. 
That's great. No brainer is an easy phrase for me to bring back to the district leadership team. So then we, when we come back together in December, we will have had that meeting with the team. I don't think we'll know yet in any way what that might involve, but that will then give us the authorization to have them start some conversations. And there are some committees that are already designed that are looking at exemplars and are bringing in some best practices and really hearing from everyone. And so to be able to give them the authorization to say, come to us and tell us what really you think you might need and to know that the board would be supportive of that is wonderful. I, I would add, and, and thank you for mentioning the committees or the councils that are working on this topic, because there are a number of, of somewhat overlapping councils uh, who are focused on external communication, internal communication, our feedback council as well, the community advisory council. Um, so there are a number of different groups that are um, just actually this month exploring exemplars, looking for, looking to identify gaps, um, and haven't yet started to uh, suggest ways of, of filling those gaps, but certainly uh, looking at exemplars, I think it was um, really uh, wonderful that the development teams thought first to explore exemplars as we're trying to identify the gaps that might exist and improvement opportunities. Um, each of those councils is looking out uh, outward to find ex exemplars that, that we can um, use, and, and some we're learning from, others are um, affirming some of our work in some ways, and, and others are helping us to identify, gosh, this is something we should be doing and we're not yet. Um, and so I, I appreciate that perspective of, of wanting to make sure that we're um, listening to those councils and, and the feedback and the direction that, that they're giving us as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is the reception of visitors. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to share comments with the board, subject to reasonable constraints, but is not intended to be a time for members of the public to enter into a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public participation may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. Criticism of, it, of individuals is not in order. In accordance with board policies 8022 and 1150, individuals appearing before the board are expected to follow these guidelines. Any person addressing the board shall identify yourself, state your school attendance area, and shall speak as briefly as possible. The board president has authority to determine procedural matters regarding public participation, not otherwise in board policy, including time limitations when appropriate. The president is responsible for orderly conduct of the meeting and shall rule on such matters as the time to be allowed for public discussion and the appropriateness of remarks to the subject under consideration. At this time, if you would like to speak, please stand, say your name and your attendance area. We do have a few cards, and if you, anybody uh, would like to add as we go, we, we can, can as well. Um, so first is Craig Young with the DGEA. Good evening. Uh, Craig Young, I'm the president of the DGEEA. Um, and I just wanted to echo some of the comments that were made by Dr. Udentis and Mr. Sissel about professional development um, and how important it is for our teachers, particularly right now. Uh, we just have a, a lot going on, a lot of change happening right now. Um, our new ELA resources are, are out this year, but it's brand new. Uh, the new formative conference structure, uh, we just have done it once now. Uh, the, obviously the one-to-one -one rollout, there's been a ton of conversation about that. Um, and then next year we got a new STEM resource coming. Um, I know there's conversation about a new social studies resource and a new math resource. That's a lot of, of change. And teachers really, we need to have time, um, time for professional development, uh, time with professional trainers to understand how curricular resources are designed, um, how they're you know, intended for use by the designer, uh, time with our leaders to understand how are they gonna fit into our own district and, and what the unique makeup of, of our schools in our district and how will they fit into that those moving pieces um, and then just time with each other to learn from each other um, to multiply and compound the benefit of, of all the planning that we're doing on our own when I'm doing one thing someone else is doing something we can share those those benefits just compound for our students um, I, I know the calendar is tight I know uh, it's tough to find time for that quality professional development, but I just can't stress enough how important it is um, to the, the student experience and, and the ability to provide great quality instruction. So, just that's all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, next is Tom Salaba. Good evening, District 58 board members, staff, and Downers Grove residents. For what it's worth, I think you all would look great on camera. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tom Salaba, and I live at 4938 Lee Avenue here in Downers Grove. I'm here to thank you for the work that you do uh, and to ask for your support in nurturing the Grove in Downers Grove. My family has enjoyed living in Downers Grove for the past 13 years. Uh, one of our sons was educated at Pierce Downers Elementary and Herrick Middle School, and both of our boys flourished at Downers Grove North. I'm happy to report to you that uh, our edu educational communities in District 58 and 99 have prepared both of them to successfully earn college degrees and become uh, productive contributors to our society, otherwise known as taxpayers. <laughs> I'd also like to congratulate the board and staff of District 58 for earning an exemplary rating, the highest rating the school can receive on the Illinois Report Card. Uh, that's outstanding. And you guys know that it wouldn't uh, have happened without the vision and execution of all your plans. So we thank you for that. Last month, I sent a proposal to Secretary Jervis asking for the district's consideration to help plant 600 new seedling trees in Downers Grove. This could be done by providing free seedlings to each of the students in District 58 first grade classrooms. Arbor Day 2019 is April 26th, and I think it's an ideal time to activate this plan, should you agree moving forward. In addition to instruction on how to plant and care for these new trees, students could also be taught about the impact that trees have on our environment, our well-being, and our economy. If you agree and implement this proposal, we could plant 6,000 new trees in the next 10 years. Even better, at the same time uh, that students are growing through our educational system, they will also see the significant growth of their planted tree by the time they finish high school. I don't know, maybe some of you had had the opportunity to I did in first grade yeah. uh, here in District 58. All first graders uh, received, unfortunately, we received elm tree saplings. <laughs> and when the Dutch elm disease came through, um, a lot of them were taken down, but they didn't know that at the time. Um, but as I told you in the email, uh, both trees that my sister and I planted are four stories tall in our backyard, and our entire block is filled with trees because there were eight of us um, that were all in the same first grade class. And just as a born and raised here in Downers Grove, it makes me very happy and proud to know that we have something growing that we planted um, awesome. through the school. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice give back, I think. <laughs> well, thank you. So the idea is that the students and the trees grow together. So by the time they're out of high school, the trees are, is, is, are pretty big. Um, since writing my letter to you last month, the Assistant Superintendent of Parks and previous forester, Mike Stelter, has connected with an organization called Living Lands and Water, who generously have pledged to provide seedlings for this cause. With trees already committed and uh, hopefully your future support, we'll find a way to distribute these seedlings to each District 58 first grade classroom with no cost to the district or its students. The program can be supported with video education, live presentations, and classroom plantings for the participants that want to throw a really great Arbor Day celebration uh, in a village that has been designated as a tree city for the last 34 years. The Park District has worked with a Miss Richards students at the Whittier School for the past few years to this end. I've witnessed the joy and curiosity of these first graders as they physically planted trees at Patriots Park and Barth Pond. Uh, the forester asked one of the, all of the students where they thought it would be a good place to plant trees. And one of the eager uh, young students raised his hand quickly and said, in my bedroom. <laughs> he was quickly corrected, and I think he learned something that day. Um, I'm grateful to know that Miss Richard's classes will someday return to Barth Pond as adults and proudly tell their children that they planted this tree. 
So without taking too much more of your time, I respectfully ask that you consider this proposal and implement its components in every first grade class on Arbor Day 2019. As you already know, uh, the logo's down, but your logo has a, uh, a tree as its, its featured emblem. And um, I believe that your motto, which is we envision, we see, we believe, fits perfectly with this effort. We envision educating our students about the benefits of trees. We see the wonderment of these students as they plant 600 new trees per year. And we believe, we believe that together we have made the world a better place by helping to ensure that our air and water are better protected and the Downers Grove canopy can be enjoyed by generations to come. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll, somebody will get back to you shortly. I understand that it's a big undertaking and probably don't want to delay on the, on the plan, so thank you. Uh, next is uh, Melissa Rausch from Whittier and Herrick. Am I too short for this? <laughs> <laughs> is that better? Perfect. Yes. Good evening, my name is Melissa Rausch. I'm a lifelong resident of Downers Grove, a proud um, product of the District 58 school system. I'm a member of the Community Advisory Committee and a parent of two students at Whittier and now one student at Herrick. Um, I feel so grateful to be in a community and with a board where we have a podium um, that allows the opportunity uh, to openly and freely express our grievances and make requests, but I think it's just as equally important to utilize this podium to express our gratitude for a job well done. So, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, <laughs> the spirit of the season, I am here to express my gratitude to you. I suspect you're all familiar, and as Tom, Tom just mentioned, um, the recent uh, ratings, ESSA ratings came out, um, and we received, the district received exemplary ratings. Uh, 11 schools were exemplary, two are categorized as commendable. And to give context to this, I'm not sure how much research you've been able to do in comparison to other districts um, within our county and around us. Um, I wanna make note, if my research is accurate, uh, that this is the second highest rating in DuPage County, and we come only second to Butler, uh, which is a district of uh, two ranking schools, and those two ranking schools ranked exemplary. So when we look at DuPage County and we compare that ranking to similar sized school districts, uh, West Chicago has a district of 11 schools uh, and they received a seven out of seven commendable rankings. And our neighbor district of Hinsdale, District 181, has a district uh, with nine ranking schools, four of which received exemplary and four received commendable. Now again, my research may not be perfect, but I think it's pretty accurate. I did only look at districts that were elementary school districts, um, but I did also consult and take a look at um, community unit districts, and still our 84% or 85% ranking of exemplary schools far surpasses every single other district in DuPage County. And I attribute that to the hard work of our teachers, I attribute that to the hard work of our students, of our parents, of our community, and to our supportive board leadership and administration. So I thank you and commend you for that accomplished bit. I also want to bring up something that was brought to my attention today at the dinner table. Um, I was fortunate enough to actually have a fifth grader talk with me about what occurred during the day. Um, and I was very excited to um, learn about an experience that I think exemplifies uh, the vision and the work of our board in this community. Um, my son, like I said, is in fifth grade at Whittier Elementary School, and he was telling me about a project that he had done within his classroom that was um, stimulated by the new ELA benchmark curriculum, where they are looking at the Constitution and talking about laws and things like that, and his teacher, um, tasked them to, within groups, come up with a project where they address 
uh, some kind of law or change that they would like to see made in terms of policy. And five groups came to the table with projects. One of those groups ad addressed a change they wanted to see in terms of women's rights in Pakistan. One of those groups talked about how they'd like to see a change in the policy at Whittier for heavy music during lunchtime. And three of those groups brought forth, brought forth change that they wanted to see in terms of gun control, which is a very um, important topic in our communities and our households today. What I thought was so special about this was that our students were prompted to have this experience because of this amazing curriculum um, that, we, that you have brought and allowed us to, to have in our communities that the teachers worked so hard to, to decide upon and I thank you and the teachers for the hard work on that. I also thought it was quite cool that the teacher who maybe begrudgingly began using Seesaw this year <laughs> has now begun to embrace that communication tool uh, because she shared that with the, the, you know, she posted those projects utilizing Seesaw which allowed us parents to kind of um, see what was going on and open up that conversation and have that dialogue at our tables which I appreciate and value. But even more impressive and what really um, struck a chord with me was the fact that Dr. Kremascoli saw that this work was being done and took the initiative to make a connection with my students, with the teacher, and with this board. Uh, because members of the board, those who were there, I appreciate you for being there. Uh, Ms. Do or Dr. Kremascoli um, invited, with, in talking to the teacher, invited board members to come and talk to the students and give them a voice. <coughs> Uh, to what they are thinking and feeling on these issues in terms of gun control so that the board members could take that information and take those thoughts and conversations back to the greater community in terms of conferences and meetings that you board members are having with like-minded people in your, in your field. And so for me as a parent and as a community member, that is just an exemplary um, example of what it is that you do as a board and a community. You have a teacher who works hard to create experiences for students. You have a superintendent who recognizes um, the communications that are going on in, in those classrooms and is willing to try and make connections with the board and the staff members. And all that boils down to is a clear understanding for me as a parent that your focus is student-centered and you are here working for my children and to better the community and this district. And I appreciate and value all that you do. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and for sharing your experience as well. Thank you. Do we have any other cards? Is there any other cards on the basket? She passed it to you. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, Samantha, yes. I was going to save you, it's Figueroa. Thank <laughs> so, you. <laughs> um, Samantha Figueroa, I am a Lester parent of a first grader. I'm also on the advisory com uh, community oh. council advisory committee. Is that right? Community yeah. advisory council. Something very like close. But we meet on Wednesday. Wednesday. And so um, I have collected some exemplars uh, for in preparation for our meeting on Wednesday, so this is a little sneak preview. There were some things that um, I was hoping to maybe see um, as alternative options for video recordings. I don't know if they didn't make the short list, but um, I wanted to share some other options that other school districts had um, explored. And especially since maybe a test run or trial or cost seems to be the main concern um, prior to really committing to maybe some other more expensive options, wanted to bring those forth to you. Um, one of the things that I thought was really creative is that a school district had tapped into their um, high school journalism and AV um, department or uh, 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 like their radio um, uh, classes and courses. And so kind of a way to have cross curriculum with some high school students. Some of the pros and cons included in the fact that you wanted to have maybe older students, juniors and seniors, considering these meetings may run late and we don't want any kids staying out past curfew. Um, also um, that uh, one of the benefits with that 
is that they oftentimes have their own video equipment. So being able to have the video re recording cameras that would be compatible with the uh, village audio systems. Um, perhaps if they didn't, they have their own um, microphones, uh, also uh, computer systems and so on. Um, so that I thought was a real cute and creative way to bring in high school students at a low cost, maybe no cost option. Um, perhaps even working with District 99 to have some sort of school credit system or something like that that could go towards, um, towards their courses. Another thing that I was surprised to not see as an option was um, the possibility of uh, recording meetings, um, whether they be here at Village Hall or off-site, in-house. So I know that I see a lot of really cute and creative videos that you guys uh, post. Um, on Facebook, um, but uh, if this is something from a trial perspective that is of interest, that perhaps utilizing our own internal equipment, um, maybe it's not going to be the highest quality like a Sunrise Communications, but at least um, you get the gist. And so you can check to see if um, people will have interest. They will. I, I'm a firm believer that if you build it, they will come. Um, that there's probably a lot of interested individuals that are unfortunately at home because they don't have sitters or they have uh, scheduling conflicts. So um, I was hoping that maybe that could be an option that could be explored um, in terms of the equipment necessary. Um, you don't have to necessarily have that dual camera that is pretty fancy with Sunrise Communication, but you could have a single camera that could probably sit up um, on the side of the room and um, then also a, so cam a camera, tripod, mic, and computer. Also, some other, excuse you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that would have been much funnier oh. on video. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyways, where was I? Um, <laughs> another option that um, could be leveraged, I know that there was discussion in, two, in the two options that were to post videos, um, post production on YouTube. However, there is also YouTube Live, which offers video streaming, live streaming, if you will, um, and then other options like live stream, which is a Vimeo product um, that also has cross compatibility with other social media platforms. So um, I think that there's a lot more for us to explore here, especially um, if those are our only two options that are being presented. We can chat more on Wednesday, but um, we've got a long list of other stuff that we have um, that we're looking forward to talking about. So perhaps even more options to consider for the board before committing to the village. Um, the reason also that I bring that up is that um, I'm a huge proponent in keeping the equipment in-house, so then you do have the opportunity to offer transparency to your other committee um, meetings. I do really think that there are a lot of interested people. Obviously, when you do, there was a question about analytics, so you can see how many views and things like that you can see on your videos um, on YouTube, of course. Um, but I'm going to get a little futuristic here. Um, some of the things that uh, we've been working on for um, our meetings, just in terms of being a lighthouse district, figuring out how we can leverage technology and possibly help close some of the inequity gaps that um, have been uh, concerns that have come up at other board meetings as well, is that there's a true opportunity to leverage um, video and video streaming and um, so the other stu students within the district can share those experiences. So I, what kind of touched me was that one of the um, community members had expressed concerns. She was a scientist and she wants to bring science experiences to peers. So how could we bring, and she felt guilty for doing it because she felt like she was just perpetuating the inequity mm -hmm. by offering her services just to peers and not to all of the district. So how could we bring those experiences to the other classrooms? And that's through video streaming. Um, those are through webinars. Some, and obviously, there's some precautions that you need to take to make sure that 
you have permissions to, um, ex uh, to have some students on videos, ones that have permissions and ones that don't. Those are all other details that you can work out. But if you think big picture, there's a real exciting opportunity to, um, to showcase um, some of these really neat experiences that some of these students are getting in the classroom, whether they're PTA funded with a um, perhaps um, assembly, or maybe it's because there's a really neat guest speaker that's um, being showcased at another school. So being able to share those experiences, obviously they're virtually, um, could be something that might um, might help with that perception of an inequity gap where some students are getting some things that others aren't. So let's open it up to everybody where they can all participate. Um, and also your question about podcast, uh, Liberty School District, do they do podcasts? Okay. All right, that's it, thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you for your ideas and comments, thank you. Okay. Don't think we have any more cards. Anyone else like to speak? Okay. Thank you. If not, uh, we will move on to uh, our regular meeting approval of minutes. Are there any suggested revisions to the minutes presented as presented in the packet of materials regarding the October 10th, 2018 meeting? No. Okay, if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes uh, of the October 10th, 2018 meeting as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried to approve the minutes of the October 10, 2018 meeting as presented. Uh, next is regarding the special meeting curriculum workshop on October 22, 2018. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the October 22, 2018 special meeting, which was a curriculum workshop as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried to approve the minutes of the October 22nd, 2018 special meeting curriculum workshop as presented. Next is the consent agenda. Are there any items a board member would like to have approved, would like to have considered separately in the consent agenda? Okay, if not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the personnel report and financial statements consisting of the list of bills and summary as presented in the packet materials. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I think there's that. Um, Melissa, will you please call? I'm sorry. Uh, nothing. I was just going to say um, I noticed that Jane uh, put her letter in, so uh, that, I think that's uh, just want to call attention to that. I think that's uh, congratulations on <laughs> order. I'm sure she does appreciate it, but if we vote no, I think that we should be able to keep it forever. Happens, we vote no, I was going to say vote no just because of that. Can I, can I carve that out and just vote no? No, I'm just kidding. Well deserved. Uh, Melissa, please call roll. Member Joshi. Is it an aye or a yes? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. Member Miller? Aye. Member Samanti? Yes. Member Siegel? Aye. Member Purcell? Aye. The motion carried. The consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet materials. Uh, next are our recommendations for action. Uh, is there a resolution, is there a motion, sorry, to adopt the American Education Week resolution as presented in the packet? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. Member Miller. Aye. Member Samanti. Aye. Member Siegel. Aye. Member Purcell. Aye. The motion carried to adopt the American Education Week resolution as presented. Next is the 2018 Certificate of Levy, as recommended by the Assistant Superintendent for Business, Todd Drayfall. Is there a motion to adopt the 2018 certificate of levy in the amount of $57,243,000? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. Member Miller. Aye. Member Samanti. Aye. Member Siegel. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Purcell. Aye. Motion carried. 
to adopt the 2018 certificate of levy in the amount of $57,243,000. Next is a uh, policy, a second reading of policies number 600, school accountability, 6,000, so that was six, policy 6,000, school accountability. Uh, 6,003.2 migrant students, 6,003.3 English learners, 6,060 curriculum content, 6,110 instructional materials, uh, 8020 school district governance, 8024 powers and duties of the school board, and 8030 school district legal status as recommended by the policy committee. Is there a motion to adopt revisions to policy 6,000 as school accountability uh, number 6? 6,003.2 migrant students, 6,003.3 English learners, 6,060 curriculum content, 6,110 instructional materials, uh, 8020 school governor, school district governance, 8024 powers and duties of the school board, and 8030 school district legal status. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried to adopt revisions to policies 6,000 school accountability, 6,003.2 migrant students, 6,003.3 English learners, 6060 curriculum content, 6110 instructional materials, 8020 school district governance, 8024 powers and duties of the school board, and 8030 dis school district legal status. A uh, few announcements. Uh, Tuesday, November 13th at 7 a.m. is the Policy Committee at the ASC. November 16th through 18th is the IASB, uh, IASA, IASBO Joint Conference in Chicago. Monday the 26th of November at 6.15 is a uh, staff meet and greet at Kingsley. Uh, Monday the 26th at 7 p.m. is the Special Meeting and Financial Workshop at Kingsley. Uh, one note of that is there will also be that same night, around 7.30, there will be a Board of Education uh, candidate forum, uh, and that will be in place of the extended reception of visitors. Um, Tuesday, the 27th at 3.45 is the District Leadership Team at Longfellow. Wednesday, the 28th at 4.15 is the Legislative Committee at the ASC. And the 28th of November at 6.30 is a building tour and a PTA meeting at Hillcrest. Uh, Doug, did you mention the policy committee? Uh, mm -hmm. the yes, yeah. that tomorrow was morning. first. Okay, sorry. Uh, <coughs> 13th, 7 a.m. Yep, tomorrow at the ASC. And the notes say 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m., but it's 7.30 p.m. for Monday the 26th for the board candidate. Oh, thank you. No. Uh, yes, that's correct. I said immediately after, but you're right. Our notes do say, do say. So it is PM. It is. It's after the Board of Education candidate form will be immediately following the financial workshop. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, the board will not now meet in closed session. Is there a motion to move into closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district? Collective negotiating matters between the district and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees, the placement of individual students in special education programs and other matters relating to individual students, and litigation when an action against, affecting, or on behalf of the district has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal, or when the district finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case, the basis for the finding should be recorded and entered into the closed meeting minutes. Oh, and also discussion of the minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act, whether for the purposes of approval by the body of the minutes or some annual review of the minutes as mandated by Section 206. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Hughes. Aye. Member Miller. Aye. Member Samanti. Aye. Member Siegel. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Purcell. Aye. Um, motion carried. The board will now move into closed session after a short recess. We'll meet at uh, 9 p.m.